morning and good luck. And welcome back to Good Luck with Gino. I'm your host, Gino the Ghost. And wouldn't you know we made it to a big, momentous milestone. And that's an alliteration, a momentous milestone. Guys, it's episode 50. We hit the half century mark. It feels like just yesterday this podcast was an unborn fetus in my brain, ready to be birthed onto the world to make it a better place. And here we are. I mean, <laughs> wow. I know you've had this day marked on your calendar for months and months. So go ahead, pop some expensive champagne. Uh, go ahead and uh, blow up the balloon. Maybe you want to just let let the balloons go. You know, you blow up a bunch of balloons, you take them outside, you make a wish. I wish for episode 51 next week. You let it go into the world. Uh, welcome. Thank you. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you know what you need to do, right? You need to make sure you're subscribed. You need to make sure it's downloaded to your device because uh, people look at those metrics. You need to give it a five-star review, send it to a family member, friend, leave a, leave, a, leave a review. Don't just give it five stars. Maybe you want to let them know how you feel, you know, in the review, the review box. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, and guys, I want you to really fucking listen up what I'm about to say. You should be listening on YouTube and watching on YouTube. And why is that? Well, because if you were, you could see that today I came with it like Ash Ketchum. You'd see today, we got a lot going on. We got a lot of things to, to unpack about the fit today. First of all, I want to be the very best like no one ever was. We're wearing a Pikachu Gucci t-shirt gifted by my friend Heavy Mello a long time ago at a studio session, who's one of the best guitarists in the music industry. Uh, I mean, and if the t-shirt wasn't enough, God damn it, what are you wearing on your face? What are those glasses, Gino? Well, these are the Pit Vipers. Now, you know I'm the king of Cartier, right? You know I'm the Cartier king. But every once in a while, we like to mix it up. Sometimes we throw on the Prada. Sometimes we throw on the Studio 5020s. But today... I'm just kind of in a in a serious mood. Now, these glasses, the reason that the Pit Vipers are so incredible is because they're so ridiculous, right? They're so obnoxious and out of pocket that they somehow are also the most serious glasses you can wear. Do you know what I'm saying? They're such a, they're such a, huh, what are those on your face? That when I wear them, you better fucking respect me and pay attention. Do you know what I mean? Polarized, fashionable, pit vipers. This is not a sponsored ad. You'd think it was. Also, if you know, you know I'm a serious mauger. Um, anyway, we'll see if I keep them on the whole episode. I also have the buffs to my left. I might throw those on when I feel like it. Maybe we alternate throughout the episode. Maybe this is kind of a new thing where I kind of alternate frames. Anyway, if you're watching on YouTube, what you should be, you know what you need to do. You need to go ahead and open up your cupboard. Um, you're going to pull out a, a vat. If you've got it, a coconut oil. I recommend you get it from Costco. Get a big thing of coconut oil. It's like 15 bucks. And then you're going to go into your garage, right? And, and you're going to pull out some grease. You're going to bring the grease into your kitchen. Now, you're going to go ahead and take a mixing bowl. You're going to pour some of that grease into the bowl, and you're going to pour some of that coconut oil into that bowl. You're going to mix it up, okay? And then you're going to cup, cup, cusp it like this, and you're going to bring it over to your computer, and you're going to go ahead and grease up that rhythm. You're going to grease up that algorithm. You're going to apply that, that greasy coconut oil grease to the algorithm by leaving a comment in the comment section. Before you even start the episode, hopefully you've already done it, if this isn't your first time. But if it is your first time, that's how we get down here. We grease up that algorithm with a comment, because we're on the way to climbing to becoming the top podcast in the world. And um, yeah, that's what you're going to do. Uh, you're going to make sure you're subscribed as well on YouTube. You're going to hit the like button. And now we can get on with the episode. I mean, if that's not a fucking intro, then I don't know what is. We're kicking off episode 50 with the bang. When I say don't skip the intro, I mean it. Let's talk about the week. First, we're going to talk about my week. 
I had an eventful week. I woke up uh, to like 30 messages and a bunch of missed calls from my father. I thought my house back in Detroit like exploded or something terrible happened. Turns out there was just a scammer that was impersonating me on Facebook. So some guy made a fake Gino the Ghost Facebook page, friended all my friends on Facebook, and messaged them. Um, so I got a bunch of messages like, yo, is this you? Hey, bro, is this you? Yo, did you just make a new account on Facebook? And is this... And the message that this guy was sending everybody... Um, here's one screenshot someone sent me. I always advise my followers not to depend on one source of income because nobody knows what tomorrow has for us. This is the reason I always refer my followers to a Bitcoin company where they can make a good profit and they come back to thank me after making good profit. Okay, so there's no such thing as a Bitcoin company, first of all, <laughs> okay? Uh, second of all, I will never... DM you out of the blue and say, hey, are you interested in investing in my Bitcoin company? We don't know what tomorrow has for us. Please invest in my Bitcoin company. So, you know, I, I'm pretty entrenched in Web3. I do crazy things on the internet uh, with AI and crypto, and I've been in this world for many, many years. So I deal with scammers on a regular basis. Now, I take great pride and great joy in destroying scammers. And I, you can do this in various ways. Um, what a lot of people do, you know, they'll be like, go fuck yourself, and they'll block them, or they'll, like, report them, or whatever, to, like, Twitter or whatever. No, 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 <laughs> You're not getting off the hook that easy. I will literally, when I tell you it's a hobby of mine, I will lead a scammer on a wild goose chase for weeks <laughs> thinking that they're going to scam me. Do you understand? Somebody will be like, you know, try to do like an NFT trade with me or like something, something, something. And they'll send me like a phishing link. You know, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, just do the trade on this website. And they'll send me like a phishing link. And I will for weeks get their hopes up and pretend like I've fallen for it. And I'll make them send me different links and different... I will literally waste their fucking time. Because it brings me great joy. Same with robocallers, you know, the, the latter. So for this guy, I sent him a pretty uh, crazy DM. Because this more so pissed me off. Um, I don't like when people impersonate me. I take security very seriously. Uh, I have a YubiKey, which I recommend everybody get. A YubiKey is basically a, um, it's a hardware two-factor authenticator. So like, you know, you've heard of two-factor authentication. A lot of people use SMS two-factor. So you put your phone number in and you enter your password. They'll send you a text like, was this you? you th that is not a secure way. That is not secure. It's more secure than not having it. But what happens is a lot of people get SIM swapped. So they'll go to, a you know, your cell provider do a, a SIM swap, they steal your phone number, and then they hack all your shit because when you go to when they go to log in, it texts them, or they'll be like, change password, and it texts them to change the password, and then they steal your shit. A YubiKey is literally a tiny, two, it's like a, it looks like a USB drive, like a thumb drive, and you plug it into your phone, and when you log in, you literally need to like press it while af, like to log in. Okay, and you can buy a bunch of them and you can have a bunch of them backed up. I recommend everybody get one. So anyway, I have that. And about a week ago, somebody was trying to hack my Facebook because I kept getting notifications and shit. And they couldn't because I have a YubiKey. It was probably this fucking loser. So now I'm hot. So I sent him a just insane message, which was basically, I posted it on my Instagram and got a lot of feedback on it. But it was basically like, hey man, here's what's gonna happen. I have a white hat hacker on payroll, which I do. And one of my dear, dear friends is a white hat hacker that I've known through crypto for about four years. And he owes me some favors. And basically I told him, I can have your IP address. I'll know who you are, where you're doing this from. I can get all that information within the next like two hours if I press the button. 
And then I can destroy your life. And I can do that in many ways. I can obviously go straight to the authorities. Or I can just tell him to go after it. And I call that pressing the big red button. And I'm not going to get into details of what that is because this is a recorded podcast. But when I say destroy his life, I mean destroy his life. Okay? And then I put it up for a poll. Like, what should I do? I asked my followers. Should I dox this guy publicly? Which I'm not going to do because... I'm very very much against doxing. But I could dox him and make fun of him on the show and do a whole charade, and it would be hilarious. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. The other option was report him to authorities, which I could, which is very simple. Get his identity, report him to authorities. And the third thing is press that big red button. And I asked my followers what I, what I should do, and the overwhelming majority wants me to press the big red button. You motherfuckers are savages. <laughs> That's why we get along so well. Uh, I gave him 12 hours to delete the account. He deleted it in about five hours. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, I, have his, I have the IP address. I have all the info. Um, we'll see. Maybe next, next week I'll have the update. I'm probably going to do nothing. Because he deleted it. And he hopefully fucking learned his lesson. And it's, it's probably somebody who knows who I am. Because they uh, I don't know they why, would, why they would have chosen me. And knowing that I'm like in crypto. So anyway. Uh, that's enough on that. What else is going on in my life? I've been biting my nails again. I, I used to have a really bad problem biting my fingernails. And I stopped. Uh, and the, the remedy was I started getting manicures. And I would get manicures and I just stopped biting my nails. And I haven't got them in a very long time. And I have been biting my nails again. And I think I'm just going to have to start getting manicures again because I don't know otherwise how to stop doing it. It's like the worst fucking habit. I can't stop doing it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can get hypnotized or something. And apparently that is some shit that works. I don't know. Um, all right. Let's talk about the week in general. Um Jennifer Lopez has had a pretty tough week. I don't know if you guys have seen. Basically, she like, you know, for the first thing she did, this has kind of been mounting. The first thing she did is she dropped like her own movie that she self-funded. And uh, it was, I mean, let's call it what it is. It was, it was kind of just a disaster, right? Um, tough watch. The internet did not, it did not go over well. Then she did like a documentary and she dropped this documentary and she just is like, <laughs> she just has this clip where she's like, you know, you've probably seen it, but she's like, yeah, like, like, what's your favorite meal from the Bronx, you know, from the block? And she's like, you know, a ham and cheese sandwich and an orange drink, if you know, you know. And then it's like, what's something that New Yorkers say? And she goes, fuck you. And basically, all of New York is like, what do you, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, and they're just dragging her and it's just not going well for her. Um, and it's just been really kind of fascinating to watch from afar. And then I've also seen all basically I started seeing all these like. It's just funny how the Internet dog piles on people because then it became trendy algorithmically to like pile on Jennifer Lopez. So like, you know, I'm all for jokes like I made a JLo joke that was funny, you know, but it was like a harmless JLo joke. But I'm talking about people who like are unpacking her maliciousness and like talking about how terrible she is. And I started seeing like a hundred fucking stories of like one time I was at a cafe and JLo was there with the bodyguard and she, and I said hi to her and she just kind of looked at me like, what a bitch. It's like, dude, <laughs> you know? Oh, you just, you're just trying to belong. huh? You're just trying to get in on this. And that's what happens, man. Everybody just kind of piles in and like, takes a crack and and it's um so then I saw a post that was basically like does anybody have a positive JLo story if anybody does please stitch this video so I stitched it cuz I have a positive JLo story I like 4 years ago wrote a song that JLo was going to release 
um, leading up to the Super Bowl. She was going to perform it at the Super Bowl halftime show. This is in 2020. And I, uh, the label called me, and they're like, hey, we need you to pull up to Ryan Tedder's house. J-Lo's coming to Ryan Tedder's house. And I'm like, sick. Big Ryan Tedder fan. Big J-Lo fan. Glad she's cutting it. I, I came with the, the co-writer. J-Lo was late. I told the story on TikTok. You know, J-Lo was a little late. And she pulled up in like a fucking full mink coat, which is hilarious. And I respect that as somebody that wears obnoxious clothing. And um, yeah, she was super nice. I have nothing bad to say about J-Lo. I was like, basically, sorry to disappoint you, internet, but it was a fine story. I've worked with so many artists. You've heard a couple stories on here, and I'll share some at some point, but with just horrible stories. Artists are fucking nightmares, a lot of them. And it's it's like kind of what sucks about working in music is that like you meet some of these people that you like grew up listening to or looking up to or you meet your peers and they just fucking suck. But she was great. And um, anyway, the, everyone's pissed at me. My fucking comment section is like, well, of course she was nice to you. You you wrote the song. She needs you. Well. How much did J-Lo pay you to post this? Oh, is J-Lo in the room with you? Bro, these motherfuckers are mad at me. <laughs> I'm getting like, I get on here and say like crazy political shit and I make fun of people and I told people to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. Like I say the craziest shit on here, right? And people are mad about this. And I just like, it's fascinating to me how celebrity is just dead now. People do not give a fuck about celebrities anymore. I remember, man, I, and I talk about this a lot, but dude, like, I just remember, you remember growing up, if you're, if you're around my age, and you went to, like, the grocery store, or you went to Target, and all the magazines where you check out, it's like, you know, stars, they're just like us. And it's like Jennifer Garner, like, at a 7-Eleven, or like, Ben Affleck, like, fucking in his pajamas like getting mail and you're and, and everyone was so fascinated that celebrities are just regular people and now motherfuckers hate celebrities <laughs> they just hate them they're fed up and i think that was kind of like j-lo kind of you know encompasses diva celebrityism and p the the public is rejecting it They are just, they are just rejecting it. They're purging it. And it's been, it's been just, it's been wild to watch, man. And, and I do, uh, you know, I don't feel, she's rich as fuck. I don't really feel bad for her, but I, it's gotta be tough, you know, just like seeing, I can't imagine. And there will be a day when it comes for me. The internet comes for everybody in one form or another. And I just can't imagine having everybody dunking on you at once. That is a weight that that most people will never experience at that level. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Um, all right, I think it's time to throw the fucking the buffs on because we're about to talk about something pretty fucking dark and I need to not be wearing those glasses when I do it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, we got the buffs on now. Let's talk about let's talk about the Nickelodeon thing. yeah, let's just talk about it. Come on, take a seat. Sit down with me in our living room together. Let's just sit down and discuss this as a family, yeah? Um, What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Ugh. Uh, the documentary Quiet on Set came out on HBO, which just unpacks all the horrors of our childhood and all the Nickelodeon shows that we loved and watched with regularity. Um, you know, first things first, like let's talk about Dan Schneider. So Dan Schneider uh, was a writer on all that. This is all that, this is all that, which is like amazing, great sketch comedy show for kids when we were younger. He was a writer on there. He basically like founded Amanda Bynes and championed Amanda Bynes and created the Amanda Show and it was a smashing success. And because of that, Nickelodeon was like, oh, Dan Schneider's lit. Like, let's give Dan Schneider more shows. And they started giving Dan Schneider all these shows. And Dan Schneider 
fucking crushed it. He did all these major shows, right? He did pretty much every show that you ever watched on Nickelodeon as a kid. Well, turns out he's a serial creep. Turns out Dan Schneider, who looks like a serial creep, not to, you know, judge a book by its cover, but sometimes you got to open the book and read the book and find out that it looks just like the cover. Sometimes you look at a book and you see the cover and you go, huh, this book kind of looks like a fucking serial creep. And then you open that book and you flip through the pages and you go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was getting massages by the young castmates on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, if you go to page 25 here, you'll see that he was obsessed with feet and had all these young girls like fucking doing feet shit. Oh, if you go to chapter 10 here, uh, you got Ariana Grande. And I'm not going to show any of these clips because it makes me so uncomfortable. And I don't want to subject you to it if you haven't seen it. But they have Ariana Grande like laying in bed, pouring water on herself and like squeezing a potato, trying to get the juice to come out of it. Dude. And like, oh yeah, fucking have Ariana Grande putting her feet in her mouth. Had her like sucking her toes. This is a like gross, dude. Yikes! Yucky, bro. And when you're watching it as a kid, you don't fucking think anything of it. You know? And, uh, what the fuck, man? Gross. <laughs> so, so that's gross. And, um, you know, and then we don't need to get into, like, all the shit with Amanda Bynes, because I don't think anybody really knows what happens, but basically, like, she got fucked up. Like, she... I'm sure it was other stuff too, but like, God bless Amanda Bynes. Uh, she had a rough, it got rough. And a lot of stars. And speaking of stars who were abused in some way or another by Nickelodeon, the most disturbing part of the documentary is the Drake Bell stuff. So Drake Bell, who was the co-star of Drake and Josh, come came out and told his testimony about how he was molested by Brian Peck, who was another actor on the show. Uh, he was a vocal coach, uh, acting coach, and won't, again, won't detail what happened. You can look this up for yourself, but just molested him in all the ways you think. Horrible, terrible, terrible. He served like 16 months in prison and then he got hired again and did three episodes of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. They put this motherfucker on set with two twin boys. Now this is on Disney Channel, but what are these fucking studios thinking, dude? Bro, my kid will never be a child actor, man. Fuck no. So anyway, horrible, gross, terrible. Um, there's way more stuff, but we're not going to get into all of it. Um, it's just it's just crazy, man. Nickelodeon's my childhood. I got Nickelodeon all over my fucking arm, dude. I have a whole cartoon sleeve with a bunch of Nickelodeon stuff on here. And uh, yeah, man, so now Drake Bell's on like this media tour, you know, and everyone's sympathizing with Drake Bell. I just want to remind people, and this isn't me dunking on a victim, but... Um, we're not going to forget that Drake Bell pled guilty to texting wild shit with a 15-year-old girl. We're not going to forget that, okay? Now, I'm sure his childhood, you know, all this horrible shit that happened to him may have affected him, but, like, you know, I'm seeing all these people like, yeah, but, you know, we need to protect, it's not a big deal, and, like, now they're trying to, like, because they feel bad for him for this, they're trying to, like, justify that, and it's just like, nah, no, <laughs> nah, no. Again, there's nuance, we can accept that this is a terrible thing that happened to him, and we hope that he can work on himself and also be like, nah, on that, right? Okay, good job, team. Okay, one more crazy story in the world of sports. 
We got to talk about Shohei Otani. This is like the craziest fucking thing, man. So Shohei Otani, if you don't know who he is, he is the biggest star in baseball. He is the Michael Jordan incumbent. He is the he is the potential Michael Jordan of baseball. This guy is the best hitter in baseball and the best pitcher in baseball. Okay? Now that's the craziest I, I want you to I'm trying to like make you understand that if you don't watch baseball but you watch other sports. He's like Tom Brady and Ray Lewis. He's like Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal. He's like what other sports are there? Whatever. You get the fucking idea. So he doesn't speak English. He has an interpreter. And his interpreter is like his best friend, right? And his interpreter is so close that in his contract, in his record-breaking MLB contract for like nearly a billion dollars that he signed, I don't even re remember. It was like $800 million. I talked about it on here uh, several episodes ago. Uh, in the contract, it says, if you fire my interpreter, I can void this contract and leave. That's how close these motherfuckers are. His interpreter got in trouble for gambling and not just a little bit of gambling 4.6 million dollars in gambling okay he lost 4.5 million dollars in gambling debts so i'm gonna read this timeline because it's crazy basically this guy was in 4.5 million dollars in gambling debt and shohei otani paid off the gambling debt he wired him all this money to pay off the gambling debt. So this is what's crazy about it. If you don't know, gambling is super illegal in sports. Like if you play a sport, you're not supposed to be gambling. You're really not supposed to be gambling, gambling on baseball if you play baseball. This is a la Pete Rose. Um, so basically, all this stuff started coming out. Mizuhara, who was the interpreter came forward, did a full interview with ESPN and basically was like, you know, Otani had no idea I was doing this. I was so embarrassed to tell him. Finally, I was like out of options. So I came to him. I confided in him. He offered to pay it off. I was so embarrassed. He paid every, you know, he paid off all my debts. We were doing all the wiring and $500,000 at a time because that's the only amount we were allowed to wire. Crypto solves this. Um, and yeah, that's what happened. Well, then Otani hired like a new person on his team, like a crisis manager. And then Otani's team came forward days later and said, none of that's true. Otani was stolen from. His interpreter stole $4.5 million. Otani never wired the money. He had no idea what was happening. And then the interpreter came forward and said, yep, I lied about all that. I stole all the money. Otani had no idea, and I take full responsibility. Uh, <laughs> does that sound a little shady to you? The MLB opened up an investigation. Um... I'm going to go ahead and make a bold assumption that this story will probably go away. I have a feeling that this Mizuhara guy is going to take one for the team here. He'll get deported. And this story will just disappear. And then one day Mizuhara will wake up and he'll have a nice amount of money nestled in his bank account. Because the MLB is not going to let their star player, their LeBron James, get fucking banned. It's too much money. The, the market that this man commands internationally and domestically, there's no, there is a sub-0% chance that anything happens to this guy. Maybe they suspend him for 10 games. For like being, I, there's, I just don't see any scenario where he's, you know what I mean? No fucking shot, dude. 
No shot. So keep an eye on that story. It's insane. Okay. One more insane fucking story. Apparently, Walmart will begin closing most self-checkout kiosks and will only be allowing Walmart Plus members to use them. Walmart Plus costs $98 a year. So basically, Walmart is going to start charging you to use self-checkout. What fucking Looney Tune timeline do we live in? Let me put the fucking pit vipers on for this. Let me get this straight, Walmart. You want to charge me to do the work that you're supposed to be paying employees to do? You want to charge me to use self-checkout? <laughs> what? In what fucking world? You're going to start charging me an admission to walk in? Should I put on a Walmart uniform? Should I start doing groceries for other people at self-checkout so I can pay off? Should I just become a cashier? Dude, the absolute fucking gall of these corporations, they're trying to turn me into a Marxist. They want me to be a communist. I'm a capitalist. I love capitalism. No, no, no. They're pushing me. You know how some episodes I lean a little bit more right, some episodes I lean a little bit more left? This episode, we're feeling a little liberal. This episode, we're feeling a little Bernie Sanders. What the fuck? And then they came forward and like, no, this isn't true. We're not going to close all self you know, self-checkout kiosks, but just some of them. And we will have... So but they are doing it. They're just trying to be gentler about it. So here's what we need to do. I've compiled this, this masterful theory. We need to all go to Walmart. We, and we may need to open up Walmart Plus accounts. So it's going to cost us each about $98. But that's okay. A small price to pay. We need to all go to Walmart and fill our shopping carts with organic fruit and, and frozen meat and chicken and, and just like a f I'm talking a full cart, like a mother of five, you know, a full grocery cart. We need to go to self-checkout and we need to just leave our carts there. Just leave the cart at self-checkout. And because of the health code, they legally have to throw all that food away. All of it. And if they don't, you, you can just fucking sue them for, for that. But they'll throw all that food away. I know it's a little wasteful, okay? It's wasteful. But this is the only way to put a stop to this immediately. And we need to move swiftly because if we don't, every other fucking grocery store is going to start implementing this. We saw it happen with the airline industry. We saw it happen with rideshare. We cannot let grocery stores do this too. We can't let them get away with this. Our window is shrinking. We got we got to act fast, okay? All right. Guys, we got a sponsor. And before we get to everyone's favorite segment, we're going to talk about that sponsor. We're going to talk about gala music, okay? Um, you know, I'm, a, you know I'm, a, I'm in the music industry, and uh, I'm very outspoken about how terrible it is, how outdated, prehistoric, and fucked it is, for lack of a better word, for artists, songwriters, producers, fans, and the like. <clears throat> gala music is a platform that uses blockchain to give artists control over their music and provide listeners with an experience that allows them to be more connected to artists and merchandise and everything else. Think, think Web3 Spotify, kinda, right? 
Um, Gala music basically dissolves the middleman and allows artists to build their community with direct access to fans and improve monetization. Okay? You, you know how I, you know, am such an adamant about engaging super fans. This is a way to do that. At Gala Music, artists stand to make much more money from their music than traditional DSPs with music, which is like their, their token, their in-platform token, if you will. Um, DSPs like Spotify and Apple Music pay out 0 0.003 cents a stream, which is trash. Yeah. On Gala, artists are paid out in music token, which currently sits at like 13 cents. Um, and they get paid from the initial sale of the music. They also get paid through secondary sales, streams, and, and just engaging with the ecosystem in general. This can easily be converted to USDC if you choose to lock in that revenue, right? Um, so yeah, Gala's sick, dude. It's, it's a great way to engage with super fans and build experiences around your release. For example... There's a new song and music video that was just dropped on Friday uh, by J.K. Mack and Young Boy Never Broke Again called Swear. And this was an exclusive release on Gala Music, which is really cool. Uh, and basically, you know, they did the release like they did the initial sale of the song. And then they also have a way for you to get a mystery box. So for $4.99, you can buy a mystery box and get the chance to receive tokens, exclusive merchandise and content. Uh, and, and much more. It's kind of, it's a cool way to like gamify the super fan experience that incentivizes the artists directly, right? So artists get paid more money. You as a super fan have the chance at making money and getting cool exclusive merch and, and shit like that. So it's really cool. Um, you know, this kind of collaboration represents the innovative possibilities of Web3 music distribution and artists who are looking to disrupt the prehistoric outdated music industry. So visit music.gala.com and download the Gala Music, the Gala Music app. Uh, you can go to Instagram, go Gala Music, Twitter, go Gala Music, and, uh, and check it out. Just go fuck around on there. If you're an artist or a songwriter or a producer or a fan, go give it a, go give it a look. Um, and just as a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. As always, nothing I ever say is financial advice, right? Okay. Let me take a sip of this unbranded water. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. You enjoy that ASMR as I take a sip of that? <sighs> let's, put the, let's put the buffs back on. It's time to get into everyone's favorite segment. I know we didn't do this last week. I, you know, I had the guest on last week. I had Justice Wears Pants on. Um, and, you know... The episodes are different when I have guests, and I love these episodes. I love making these episodes because we get to make fun of people more. I get to unpack current events more, but I think it is really important to have certain guests on, have certain conversations that I want to have because at the end of the day, it's about me, right? And if I want to sit down and talk to Justice about the state of the music industry, then I'm going to do that. I'm not going to get as many viral clips. I don't give a fuck, right? We want to talk about the hard-hitting issues every once in a while. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people come here for music insight. And then, you know, next week, I may have a crazy guest on. A, a, a highly anticipated guest, which, uh, you know, I won't even, I'm not even going to give you a preview right now. If you watch my Instagram, maybe I'll, I'll sneak, I'll sneak tease it if I have them. I'm still finding out if we're doing the show or not, but. Um, let's talk about the FOH HOF. Yeah. Let's get into the fuck out of here hall of fame. And for episode 50, the half century mark, it's only right that we bring back an absolute classic. It's only right that we bring back a FOH HOF executive. You could say a, uh, the Shohei Otani of the FOH HOF. I'm talking, of course, about Andy Elliott. Here we go. Okay, stand up, take your shirt off. I want you to do it in front of your friends. Come on, it's no big deal. This isn't about making fun of him, because I can make all you can take your shirts off, and maybe one or two of you look halfway decent. Chris, how old are you? 27. Chris, I want you to grab some of your fat. 
that is not who you are. And nobody's fucking telling you the truth anymore because the truth is dark, the truth sucks, and the truth hurts people. But only until you get the truth will you become who you're fucking supposed to be. Oh my God. Uh, HR, dude, this is insane. <laughs> okay, stand up, take your shirt off. I want you to do it in front of your friends. He's on a Zoom meeting. Come on, it's no big deal. This isn't about making fun of him, because I can make all you can take your shirts off, and maybe one or two, you look halfway decent. Chris, how old are you? 27. Chris, I want you to grab some of your fat. That is not who you are. And nobody's fucking telling you the truth anymore, because the truth is dark, the truth sucks, and the truth hurts people. Dude, the new Saw series looks pretty dark, huh? <laughs> Tell me this isn't Entrepreneur Bro Saw. Poor guy wakes up in the classroom at his local community center, and he's, like, he's disoriented, he's confused. He looks around, and he's just got, there's just like a bunch of like aspiring salesmen around him with like a pen and paper. He's like, what the fuck's going on? And then all of a sudden, the monitor flashes, and Zoom opens up on its own, like the application to Zoom opens. Hello, Chris. I would like to play a game. Take your shirt off, Chris. Chris, take your shirt off. You'll need to jiggle your fat in front of your friends. If you don't, your shirt will shrink until it's five sizes too small. And you won't be able to take it off, suffocating you like mine. You have five minutes. <laughs> I'd like to play a game. Take your shirt off, Chris. I can make I can make all you take your shirts off too. Don't laugh. I can make all you take your shirts off too. And outside of maybe one or two of you would look halfway decent. In fact, fellas, take all your shirts off. Everybody, go ahead. Take your shirts off. Drop your shorts, fellas. Now, now, reach under your seats. You'll see a, a twister, a game of twister. Let's play a game of twister, fellas. Bro is basically running a webcam porn ring. This is like entrepreneur bro chatterbait. You know? Yapperbait. Jiggle your fat, Chris. Go ahead. Grab your tummy. Grab your belly. Go ahead. Jiggle it. Jiggle that fat. Oink like a piggy, Chris. Don't laugh at him. Go ahead, Chris. Jiggle your fat. Squeeze it. Like a bean bag. Oink like a piggy, Chris. Get on all fours. Now get on all fours and oink like a piggy. Bore on the floor, Chris. What is this? Succession? Dude, you show up to an Andy Elliott training seminar, you better be ready to get naked. Bro wants all his salesmen naked and in shape. He's basically running a Chippendales. The Elliott group is essentially just Magic Mike. All Andy Elliott classes, um, they start as like trails, uh, sales training seminars and they just turn into bachelorette parties, every single one of them. Police open up. I heard some boys in here were being bad salesmen. Very bad, naughty salesmen. Take your shirt off and get up against the wall, Chris. Every single Andy Elliott training seminar. All right, I got a little. Let me take a sip of water. <sighs> take your shirt off. Hey, if you're watching back home, take your shirt off. Guys only. I don't want to get any fucking, I don't want anybody, I don't want to get canceled. Um. All right, so, hey, Andy Elliott, thanks again for the last man. Always a pleasure, dude. Always a pleasure. I mean, and I get sent, about 10 different Andy Elliott videos a week, and I just can't pick them all, you know? There's just too many. Um, all right, so 
I've been seeing this guy on my timeline. I had like a viral comment happen um, on this guy's page. Uh, he go he goes by the right stuff is the name of the Instagram page. And he basically posts these like really not funny one liners that are supposed to be like edgy Republican humor. Now, you guys know that I'm a big, big, um, I make fun of Republican humor a lot. And I want to be clear, I'm not making fun of Republicans. I'm making fun of Republican humor, okay? So again, you guys know I'm independent. I don't, I don't swing one way or the other. I'm right down the middle. But Republican humor is largely terrible. This is peak Republican humor. Ready? Okay. I'm going to play a bunch of these. And they're all just absurd. Here we go. Perfect. Thank you. Enjoy, Thank you. If gun-free zones work, why don't we set up rape-free zones? Oh, yeah. By the way, he's always eating in all these videos. He's like eating something and then he like turns to the camera, bad joke, horrible point, back to my food. He does it on every time. Let's watch this one one more time. Perfect. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. If gun-free zones work, why don't we set up rape-free zones? Okay. First of all, bro's definitely at Olive Garden. For sure. Second of all, not funny. This isn't quite the gotcha that you thought it was. Because every zone is a rape-free zone. Rape is illegal. The Olive Garden that you're at is a rape-free zone. It's all a rape-free zone. What point are you making? What the fuck are you talking about? Maybe we should set up rape-free zones. And then smiles into the camera. Like, dude. Basically saying, why have laws if criminals are going to break them? Yeah, dude, sick point. I'm pretty sure elementary schools are gun-free zones too, John. This guy is such a fucking loser, dude. Frat bro Scott Disick here, you know? Sigma Epsilon Edgelord. And it's like the way he talks in all these videos too, like his cadence, you know? Perfect, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. If gun-free zones work, why don't we set up rape-free zones? If gun-free zones work, why don't we set up rape-free zones? Who gave Kirkland brand Tucker Carlson here a platform? The fucking waiter's just putting mozzarella cheese on his on his carbonara, you know? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. If gun-free zones work, why don't we set up rape-free zones? Sir, this is a, we're at a restaurant. Let's watch another one. Every time I order a cheeseburger, I make it a double so that a vegan out there in the world isn't actually making a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! What a fucking badass, dude. Are you kidding me, dude? Dude, vegans are going to be pissed. Dude, you know there's a vegan at home just punching their fucking phone watching this, dude. You crazy son of a bitch. Well, let's watch it again. Every time I order a cheeseburger, I make it a double so that a vegan out there in the world isn't actually making a difference. <laughs> Zing! You sure showed them, man. Uh, I mean, look, vegans are annoying, but holy shit, this is 10 times worse. There's nothing worse... The, the only thing worse than vegans 
that talk about being vegan all the time is people that talk about how vegans talk about being vegan all the time. People who think that they're edgy by being like, yeah, I'm going to eat a burger. That's going to piss off the vegans. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what a fucking badass. Damn, son, where'd you find this? It's your wifey's favorite vegan. You're such a fucking loser, bro. The, the, the Ralph Lauren final boss that this guy is. Just the sassiest Birkenstock wearing motherfucker that ever walked the boardwalk, you know? Fucking... Definitely, this guy definitely is going to have a sock drawer full of country club membership cards and at least three ex-wives by the time he's 60. If you can, if you can have 10 ex-wives before you're 60. Look at this guy. I mean, this guy <laughs> is such a fucking tool, bro. Bro's running for the president of the Banana Republic. You know, this is, this is the bad version of bullying, the not funny kind. You know, I'm, I'm Mr. Bring Back Bullying. That's the brand. This is bad bullying. You got to be funny, man. And the worst part is like him just laughing at himself after at his horrible joke. He really thought he ate with this one. It's alarming. And the comments, you read the comments, and people are like, oh, fuck yeah, you're, you're carrying the app, bro. It's like, dude, you people, <laughs> the bar is this low. I drive a diesel truck and burn fumes directly into the ozone to make up for everyone driving an electric vehicle. <laughs> I'm a badass. What a fucking loser. Call me old-fashioned, but I'm glad my mother was a woman. Call me old-fashioned, but I wish your mother aborted you. Call me some 41, but the doctor said my mom should have had an abortion. Abortion, 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 abortion. Bah, 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 bah. Anybody <laughs> gets to remember that song? <laughs> Fat Lip, like the fucking hardest song ever. And that line is hilarious. The fact that they have a delay throw on the word abortion... <laughs> The doctor said my mom should have had an abortion, 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 abortion. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to waste my time. Just another casualty to society. I'll never fall in line. Anyway, back to this fucking loser. Here's another video. If your main concern is what pronouns people call you, then you're one of the most privileged people in the world. Is that a joke? Is that a punchline? If your main personality trait is your political affiliation, you're one of the most annoying people in the world. You're this guy. One of the most privileged people in the world, says the wealthy white heterosexual male. You know? <laughs> Bro is dipping chocolate ice cream covered in chocolate sprinkles into a separate bowl of chocolate sprinkles. He might, this guy might just be a serial killer. Who the fuck does that? What grown man? First of all, who's still eating sprinkles? What are you at a diner in 1960? What is this, Greece? <laughs> what the fuck is... Imagine being 40, still eating sprinkles. So then I like, I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And what is the right stuff? I thought it was his brand. No, he's got a dating app. So it's a dating app called The Right Stuff, which is basically an app for insufferable... Republicans who only care, like their only personality trait is their political affiliation to meet each other. And for the record, if there was, and there probably is, a Democrat version of this app, it would also be fucking horrible. Those two sets of people are just the most annoying, insufferable people on the planet, and they deserve each other. But turns out this guy's name is John McKenty, and John... Uh, aside from being the worst comedian on social media, was fired from the Trump campaign. He used to work in the White House. He had a gambling addiction and gambling debts and got fired from the White House. 
So this guy with all his fucking moral, can't get off his moral high horse, got fired from the White House, can't work in politics anymore. Uh-oh. Oh no, John. Yikes. Um, okay. One more video. And, uh, yeah, you know, we talk a lot about parenting, right, on this show. Um, I had a video go viral a couple weeks ago where I basically said, people need to be having less children. There's too many kids in the world, and people are not equipped to be parents. And I got a lot of kickback. Uh, oh, yeah? I'm right here, man. I'm just, I'm just hanging out, dude. I'm just hanging out. Pretend it's warm water, okay? All right? Pretend you're on a tropical island in warm, warm, 80-degree water. That's all this is. Just breathe, okay? Right, you go, you're going to submerge those three times when I call them down. Come on. Come off, I want to hear it. You got it. Done. You can. Let it out, buddy. You can. Go all the way under. Home run. Home run. Three times, I'll call it. <laughs> down. <laughs> let it out. Let it out. Shit, let it out. Hi, yes. Uh, CPS? Hi, yes. Uh, Child Protective Services? I, I, I'd like to report um, an entrepreneur bro father having his child do a uh, cold plunge. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he looks like he's about seven years old. Yeah, thanks. Great. Y yeah, talk soon. Thanks. What? If you're not, first of all, if you're not watching, you should be. Uh, you should be watching YouTube. This guy, it's a it's a group of dads with their sons in cold plunge tubs, making their kids do cold plunge. Now, the most absurd thing about this probably cost ten grand. Um. Hey, what happened to just playing catch in the backyard? What happened to just bonding at a baseball game? You know? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> what is going on? I mean, damn, maybe if I learned the Winhoff method instead of playing Pokemon Red version, I'd be a billionaire by now. Then maybe I'd have 10 rental homes before 30 instead of eight gym badges before the Elite Four. Ah, damn it, Dad. Why didn't you pay 10 grand to take me to a fucking cold plunge become a man class before my balls dropped? Fuck yeah, dude. Now this kid can implement this same discipline when learning multiplication in second grade on Monday. Like these kids, why are these kids doing cold plunges? I'm no doctor. Don't think that this is the best idea. The whole idea about doing a cold plunge is like you're regenerating your cells and you're tricking your body into thinking it's dead. When you're seven, you don't have, your cells are still, you're growing. You don't need to fucking, you're not aging yet. What are we doing? And then it's like, oh, this is, ah, what a good father. Yeah, dude. Is it a good father? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to impregnate my woman sometime in March so that my son can be born in the winter. And then upon his birth, since I'm such a good father, I'll be taking my newborn son straight to Lake Superior, straight from the hospital. I'm talking like we cut the umbilical cord, take him to the car. We drive right to Lake Superior. And uh, I'll be meeting a local Mennonite to take us on an ice fishing excursion. I'm going to cut a hole in the ice and, and submerge my child in the ice water. I'm just going to start dunking my newborn son in the water so he can become a real man and start making some fucking passive income. This, this poor kid is screaming. 
Like, you are torturing your child, dude, you fucking weirdo. I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you for, for tuning in to Good Luck this week. And I want to thank you, if you've been here since episode one, if you've watched all 50, I want you to leave a comment um, and let me know that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, and we're going to start this way. Normally we go the other way, we're going to go this way first. If you're watching on YouTube, which you should be, make sure you're subscribed. Go ahead and grease up that algorithm one more time for me, yeah? Leave a, leave a comment. Smash the fuck out of that like button. And, uh, and then if you're watching on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you're going to go ahead and do this. You're going to go ahead and make sure you're subscribed. You're going to make sure it's downloaded to your device. Take up that, that storage space you don't need. Go ahead and delete those photos of your ex-girlfriend. She's not coming back. Go ahead and just delete those. Free up some space. Make sure you download it to your device and, uh, and leave a review and yada, yada, yada. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you. And we're going to go ahead and end the episode as we always do. With, uh, with the best podcast outro in the world, the AI theme song of the Good Luck Show. As the world continues to spiral into mayhem and fathers take their adolescent children to dunk into ice bath water, thank you for doing this with me and laughing along the way. Good night and good luck. There's a brand new show that you gotta know. It's called Good Luck with Chino. That's me. It's gonna get you moving, get you in the zone. Good luck, good vibes, good times. With Chino by your side, you'll be feeling Come on, dance along, everybody. Bitch.